again, folks. Um, it's been a while. Sorry. I've had some major catastrophes going on with uh, hard drives crashing and losing a load of videos that I recorded. Um, yeah. What I wanted to do was a, a video. I've done this twice already <laughs> and lost it on two separate hard drives. Um, but about my uh, mastering workflow. That I've recently done an album. You heard the album that I mixed from my friend Gary. Uh, the band name changed. I can't remember what it was before, but now it's called Galleon. Um, the album is going to be released on vinyl. So there was a few little special little things I had to do due to the fact it was getting released on vinyl. So basically here we have our album laid out. Now I've put each item in and created then what i did was i moved each item to the end of, of the next item there is um actions that you can use to do this and i think if you look at john tidy's um the reaper blog he has a thing about how he does this with macros that i i do mastering so seldomly that i didn't bother setting it up i just find that if i pull it out i've got it set up so that it shows me to how to snap to the end of each item and that's good enough for me so i snap them to the end of each item and then basically you can select all the items if you go into the actions and you bring up um so if we go to region um so you can say insert region from select selected items and edit others uh which will create Uh, separate regions for each selected item and that will tend to name the regions the same as your item but what I would say in that case is to still go in and rename them because if you look at what my my item here is called it's called beautiful sun imported dot wave which really doesn't want it's not the the final rendered name of the file that i want so i'm just going to up and call it beautiful sun in this case i've given it a number i hope you can see that up here it says number six beautiful sun the reason being i've been given the 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 order of songs on the album so when i render them out i want to send it to the client in the order that he has specified that he wants to hear the album in so that's why i've given it a number first okay you don't have to do that so that's first step number one next step is i then on each item if i open up the mixer here i have got a virtual mix rack with a trimmer i also have here uh, an eq before that which pertains to each individual track the eq i've got set up i've got a high pass on and a low pass um, the reason being, this album is getting mastered for vinyl, okay? So what I've deliberately done is done a high and low pass just to take off, just to tame. I'm not even taking off, I'm taming them at a certain range. Now the reason for the trimmer is, uh, my very last, oh where is it, it's gone. My very last meter, I've put in a VU meter in here. There's various VU meter plugins you can use. I've set the headroom to 11. Um, and then I've got my luffs meter, which has disappeared as well. Uh, hang on, I'll bring it up. Um, I've got a luffs meter. Now what I'm aiming for with the luffs is between nine, minus nine and minus 13 dB, depending on how intense the song is. I mean, I'm. This is a quite a, an open album. I'm not crushing it to death. But I'm going for around that because, you know, once you get into your iTunes and whatnot, they're going to change it to, to minus 14 laughs and whatnot. But you can have it a little bit louder and they just turn it down a little bit. If you have it quieter, they're going to limit it a little bit more. So it's almost better to have it a little bit too loud when you're thinking about digital um, carriers, you know, because they will do some shit. Whereas if you've got it too loud, they simply just turn it down as far as I worked out. So 
so what I tend to do, let's play a little bit of music here. As I said, this VU meter is set to, to minus 11 dBFS or minus 11 VU, should I say. Sorry, and I'll get the terminology right. And then I just want it to hit at zero at that scale. Uh, the LUFS meter, as you see, I'm going for around minus 13 on my short term meter. Medium term meter is, you know, between minus 10 and minus 11. And my long term meter, that's a minus 7, but that can vary. I, I, I'm going between minus 13 to minus 10. I'm happy with my lofts on that. So it's rough. I mean, I'm not, you know, you don't have to be critical with this. This album I mixed, so I know it's not over compressed. I know, you know, where it all sits. So once I get that set up, I go through each track and I will use each trimmer after my EQ. I know it sounds daft, but I use it after the EQ because any EQ changes I make, whether I cut or boost, create extra volume or, or sorry, I'm half Swedish now, or it takes away volume. So I want to then, after that, use the trimmer to bring the volume up to a similar level for all of these tracks. Okay, hence the reason why the trimmer is after the EQ. So some of the EQs, as you see here, I've got a little bit more going on here. Um, not so much on this one. A little bit calmer on that one. And extreme on this one. Okay. I also, with my EQ here, my um, volume set it automatic. So that it automatically adjusts. But I still like to have the trimmer there just to even everything out. So I get my volume on all the tracks the same. Which is the whole point of what I'm just trying to say. Then I go through and as you can see, I EQ what I need what needs to be EQ'd, what needs to be adjusted, you know, what needs to be controlled, whatever needs to be done, okay? Then on my master bus, first and foremost, I've got a de just to take off any top end scissor or anything that you just don't want there. Um, I've also got a virtual mix rack, which with a virtual mix bus, which I'm gonna drive in a little bit. I'm giving it a little bit of louder there. Um, I did have bomber on it, but I took it off. And I've got trimmer on here as well, which I, I'm more using as a meter to see what's going on. I'm not going too mad on that. Then we've got um, stereo control here, which is a free plugin. Um, and I'm using safe bass. Again, because this is an album going to vinyl, I want my all my low end material to be absolutely in mono. So I'm using safe bass from 150 hertz down is in mono. And I'm not um, adding any stereo myth. I'm, I'm purely using that for the monoing of the bass. Uh, then I'm using this BX refinement just for a little bit of saturation. Then I've got Slate's uh, virtual tape machines, just driving it a little bit, give it a little bit of tape niceness, you know. Um, then I've got Isotope, I haven't upgraded yet, I've got Isotope 5. I'm mainly using it for EQ, I'm knocking out a little bit of low mids, uh, a little bit of harmonic exciter in the, the kind of low and high mids, and then, oh sorry, don't knock to that out, and then I'm using the maximizer. Not going mad. It's a minus two dB limiting, and my max is zero point two dB. Um, and then it's my meters, and that's it. That's my my chain on this, and that's it. That's my whole kind of um, process when I'm I'm mastering this. Then I go through and listen by you know you got to listen, make your adjustments, and then the rendering pro process is very simple. If we open up our render, we're rendering our, our region render matrix. So we've got nine regions. You can open up the region manager and here they all are. Got your whatever it is you're sending it to, your format and render. And it will render those nine files 
I've set it up also as file name and used the wildcard as region, which is why we named all of our regions. So now we don't have to worry about naming each individual track. It's already done for us because now it will name each render that renders out to the name that you gave it in the region and hit render. And that's it. It's as simple as that. So hope that was interesting. Hope it's useful, guys. I mean, I know it's just a little insight into how I do it. It's just, sometimes it's interesting to see how other people do things. Hope it helps you out. There will be more videos coming soon. I apologize for my tardiness when it comes to <laughs> releasing videos of late, but there is so much going on, you have no idea. I will do as much as I possibly can when I can, and I hope to you'll hold with me, and I'll hope to see you soon again. Thank you very much. Cheers, folks. Bye.